All right, let uh, the radius be r and height be h of a cone, both differentiable functions of t. Let v be the volume of the cone. Find an equation that relates the rate of change of the volume with the rate of the change of the radius and the rate of change of the height. What? All right, here's the deal. It's very similar to the very first example that we set up. We've got this differentiable function of t. So that means t is kind of our hidden guy in there. Even though we don't see him right off the bat when we take derivative, we're taking that derivative with respect to time. So we need to use the chain rule part of that. All right. So uh, we want volume of a cone. Volume of a cone. Anybody remember that? Volume of a cone. I think it's something like this. Correct me if I'm wrong. I have been wrong on an occasion or two. So one third pi r squared pi r squared h I believe is the volume of a cone okay and so how does this all work out then with what we're trying to do well to clean this up just a little bit and give us a little bit easier look at it here I'm gonna go ahead and write pi r squared h over 3 okay that's the same thing would you agree with that um, r squared and h are over 1, so it was pi, so I could have this situation right here. Now, we want v to be the volume. We want to find an equation that relates the rate of change of volume, rate of change of radius, and rate of change of height. So if you'll notice right here, we're going to have a chain rule situation. Okay. Um, what we want to do now is we've got the equation that we're going to work with. Okay. We've developed our mathematical model. We've got an equation that we're going to work with. Now we're going to take derivative, and we have to take derivative of both sides. So remember, like we talked about on that previous slide, we want dvda version or dvdt version of derivative. So dvdt is equal to, and then we want to take the derivative of this side. And you know what? Maybe this one would have. Maybe this one is easier to work from for derivative purposes. But also for derivative purposes, we have to chain rule that. So let's dive in, shall we? It's the first one third pi. Okay, one third pi r squared h r squared times the derivative of the second. So one third pi r squared times the derivative of the h, which is one then times dh dt. Why dh dt? Because we're looking at the change in the height over the change in the time. Okay, dh dt. Plus one third pi times the derivative of the first 2r times dr dt. Why dr dt? because we're looking at the change of the radius over the change in time. Okay, we have to have that. Times the second, which in this case is h. So your final answer, you don't want to leave it like that. That's a little bit yucky. We want to clean it up a little bit if we can. And now we can kind of go towards this form right here that I wrote at first. I could, I've got pi r squared all in numerator. So dv dt would be pi r squared over 3 times dh dt plus and on the other side pi and 2r and h are all in the numerator so I could have 2 h r pi over 3 times dr dt and that's your answer right there. That's an equation that relates change in volume with change in height and change in radius. And that's the question that we're asked to find, something that relates all three of those together.